an intriguing group is coming together in College Park, and we have Brenda Freeze here to talk all about it. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Maydahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. We have women's basketball on the podcast six days a week, five days a week during the weekdays, everything. Saturdays are for the WNBA draft as well. Make sure you're listening, you're subscribing everywhere you can, especially on YouTube. It's not just me, it's our entire team over at thenexthoops.com, where we have over 100 reported pieces about women's basketball every single month. And my goodness, we had a lot of them over the spring semester. Even after the end of the NCAA tournament, there's been a lot of interesting talent coming into Maryland. Uh, Brenda Fries is here to talk all about it. Brenda, thank you for being here with us. And I mean, just as you started to see that come together on paper, how much of your time was spent when you weren't walking your new dog, Archie, trying to figure <laughs> out how all the pieces are coming together. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Howard. Always, always great to, to be on. And, you know, I can't say enough about our staff and, and the work that they put in. We all have been impacted every school in the country by the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. It is our, our new normal. I think that, you know, the biggest thing we continue to, to see you know, we're very fortunate. I'm grateful to have had the, the consistency and the time here in Maryland. But the fact that we are, you know, a consistent national power program, we've done really well in the portal. And this offseason was no different. When you talk about a Lavender Briggs that came in from Florida, SEC player over Christmas, you know, a, a huge, huge player for us to, to be able to get. And then in the offseason, we, we were able to, to really kind of gain so many great pieces that, that are going to make a, a big difference for us. And when you get the Ivy League player of the year in, in, in uh, Abby Myers, you know, uh, Brene Alexander, who is a grad transfer from Vanderbilt, another player in the SEC, Eliza Penzon, you know, is a South Florida point guard that has beat Stanford in her career and has played the Yukons and has had a, a lot of success. And then Allie Kubik from Towson that had, you know, unfortunately a, an ACL injury for us, but, you know, is another player that was putting herself in the mix to, to possibly be a starter. So, you know, those, those transfers we were able to get, and then we added two more freshmen with Gia Cook and, you know, uh, Brianna McDaniel. So, you know, it was just a, an off season like no other when you talk about a lot of pieces that, that we had to put into, into play as a staff, but all, all of them made sense for us. We, we as a news organization need to report when something newsworthy happens. So when you <laughs> wouldn't have a top 10 recruiting class, that would be the time we'd have to report on it because you did a 15th year uh, in your tenure at Maryland. And that is not just a consistent thing that you've done in terms of bringing in young freshmen, but you have them play right away, you know, famously, obviously, on the title team and uh, throughout. So take me through, if we could, because there's some really interesting talent. Before we get into both the returnees and obviously that incredible transfer class, who are we going to see with regular roles in that rotation right away? You know, Gia, Brianna, really talented. Ava and Mila also, um, you know, players who I'm eager to see in your system. But who, who who's going to fit in right away, do you think, and play and yeah. contribute? I mean, you're having, that's a great question. And you know, I, I do, I subscribe to the theory age is just a number mm -hmm. and that national championship run. We had two freshmen in the starting lineup with Christy Tolliver and Marissa Coleman. They're all so different that that's a really tough question. You know, obviously losing Ali Kubik <laughs> thrusts Mila when she, you know, is able to, to get there. She's had a couple setbacks in in this preseason but you know we feel like she will be able to get there and you know gives us that that presence you know inside and out she's got a, a tremendous opportunity based off of 
to sheer numbers, but they're also different. You know, when you when you look at a player like Brianna McDaniel, she's a defensive stopper slash scorer, and she's really shown that. So when we need to crank up our defense, that's going to be someone right away that that our staff can can go to. Gia Cook is speed on speed. You know, you know the great thing is she's going to be able to learn under the wings of. Aliza Penzan at, at that point guard position. So it won't all be thrusted on her shoulders as a freshman, but again, someone that can really push the tempo. And then Ava Ciola is a knockdown shooter, highly skilled player, that glue type of, of pieces. So, you know, as they grow and, and develop and gain that consistency, they're all, I, I can tell you this, they're all going to be counted on. We, we need them to not be freshmen, so to speak, where that maturation, you know, that, that it's seamless that they don't kind of look like freshmen on the floor. And once mm-hmm. they get to that point, you know, they, they all can have an immediate impact. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to Tolliver and Coleman. I, I have a feeling <laughs> they <laughs> went on to do a couple of things since Ooh. then. Yes, that, they that, did. Yes, they do. And they continue to. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. I, I would be remiss and, and our, our listeners have to go check it out. You, you did this video uh, that's, you know, you call it a hype video and I think hype would be the way to say it. So I'm kind of ready to run through a brick wall to go cover this after I see it. Uh, but just be able to have that legacy where Cheyenne Sellers is talking to Marissa Coleman. And then of course, Christy Winter Scott comes out, uh, and, and walks through about it as well. I just wonder, like it, it, you get so focused on the day to day. I know with trying to, you know, continue to keep this program going the way it has, but do you ever let yourself stop and think about, you know, just like who has walked these halls and who is, um, you know, in that legacy, um, you know, you, you among them, frankly. Sometimes I, I think by the, the nature of the beast in this profession, not often enough. Hmm. You, there are times you'll, you'll see a past video. You'll be able to reflect on, on some certain moments. I love when we go down our, our hallway and, there's the picture of us at the final four beating Louisville on their home court. You know, you, you have that flashback of what that moment was like, but you know, you're, you're so, so much in the trenches, so to speak, and you don't get that much time to reflect, but I'm sure one day, you know, when I'm retired, you, you'll have even more time to, to be able to look back on it. But I do try to, to find those moments when they kind of present themselves to, really just appreciate all the wonderful times we've had. Your teams, you know, there's obviously a transition, people left, people coming in. Um, So when you look at the numbers, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to say, all right, this Maryland team does that, but your Maryland teams have some characteristics that are there year after year after year. And one of the ones uh, that is most interesting to me is how much you run. Um, This is not a team that has played slowly for years now, but you have been in the upper 10% in terms of transition opportunities per synergy each of the past two seasons. A, I wonder how much that has become even more of a focus for you for what you're looking for on the players you're bringing in and how much this team is ready to do just that when you think about how they're going to play this year. Yeah, huge staple to, to who we are. So, yes, we are very conscious of bringing in players that want to play up tempo. I think it's an exciting style of play. You're going to have more offensive opportunities. You're going to score the basketball. That's what these players love to do. They have the green light. They have the ability to to take it and push and transition when, when they feel comfortable. So it is a, a really important staple for our program. And I think when you look at our current team past moving in the future, players are really a lot more versatile. They can do a lot more things. And so just having that opportunity to run and push and transition, quite honestly, I think we'll, we'll always want to be there. The, the intention and in, in how we run the program, I, I think fans want to watch it. It's an exciting style of play and, and we want to continue to recruit players that, that want to play in this type of system. When you told Eliza about it after, you know, in South Florida to take nothing away from them, very successful program and Jose does a great job down there. But their pace is always, you know, sub 300 in all of D1. When you told her about how you wanted her to play, uh, did she just kind of light up? And, and you know, how, how exciting is it? How much fun is it to see her in that kind of system yeah. for you guys? I, I love it because, Aliza, the, the first thing that she shared with me was that she wanted to, to play at a Power 5 school and in front of a ton of fans. So mm-hmm. she picked the right school for both of those. And, 
you know, she is really growing with having the green light. She's doing a phenomenal job commanding the floor and running the team, but just that, that extra opportunity that we want every player on the floor to be a scorer and have an attack mentality. She's really playing with, with a ton of freedom. Locked on women's basketball is brought to you by sweat block. Rebecca would watch her teenage daughter suffer through low self-esteem caused by embarrassing sweat. Rebecca got a text after her teen's first use of sweat block. Text read, I am not sweating. They both cried tears of joy. Rebecca was able to fix her problem with sweat block. Sweat block wipes are your little secret to confidence. The sweat block wipes work for up to seven days per use. Apply them on a Sunday and you will stay dry all week. If you or someone you love is experiencing embarrassing sweat or odor, try sweat block. Save 20% with promo code Locked on at sweatblock.com. Also available on Amazon. You guys are generally top 20 in the country in turnover percentage, as in lowest uh, year in and year out. I know that's harder to do with less continuity. How do you arrange that and how do you figure out ways to do it, especially the way you're being tested early on, which we'll get into in a minute? Yeah, you know, I think having an understanding, I, I think that I hope I hope I'm wrong, but it could be different this year, just given the fact that there's only one returning starter in the, in the lineup. So you don't have that chemistry and continuity that we've had the last two years to uphold those numbers. We are conscious of it, you know, through film, through your time on the practice court. So, you know, I think when you bring that awareness as well, I think we'll be a team that will grow in that area. I, I think as our chemistry grows, we've seen that even in practice, our practice is early compared to now are, are starting to round out into better form. But again, I think it's going to be a work in progress for us all year as we build that, that chemistry. And, you know, what I, I think I saw was the fifth toughest schedule in the country, you know, is, you know, to be built with so many new players with teams that have so many returning players coming back, that can be a lot. And so we're going to be battle tested. I, I love the fact we're going to know where our strengths and weaknesses lie right away in our non-conference, which mm -hmm. should bode well for us when you talk about the the Big Ten conference play in postseason. So you obviously are not a big believer in a nice, relaxed, calm November, because when you look at this <laughs> schedule, and just so our listeners are aware, that is, you know, not in – understatement in terms of how difficult this is. November 11th, South Carolina comes to College Park, you know, an up-and-coming program you might be familiar with. Uh, you got at... Yeah, defending national champions. That's right. That's right. At Baylor on November 20th, you got DePaul in Fort Myers coming up over Thanksgiving. And then you cap it off by heading into December at Notre Dame at Notre Dame before you get into the Big Ten Conference play. And so I guess I'll ask it in two ways, right? Wait, Number wait, you forgot UConn. You forgot UConn after Notre Dame. UConn <laughs> December 11th. also December. Excuse me. Yes, <laughs> on December 11th. So You're missing one, Howard. <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Oh, man, the, forget forget you guys. The UConn fans would never forgive me for that. So I, right. I'm glad you mentioned. So – you obviously have all of these tests coming up and, and, and a twofold question, really. You guys have dominated the Big Ten during your time in the Big Ten. But I don't think there's any question that this league has gotten exponentially stronger over the time that you have been there. People, I, I, the way I think of it is you guys have kind of set a standard and there have been other programs that have uh, now begun to try and reach it and, and, and done that in many ways is that added pressure for you because you've never played cupcakes in November, but is it added pressure for you to make sure that your team is ready for bi the big 10 in a way that maybe you could have coasted somewhat five years ago? You know, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say added pressure. I think it, we definitely want to be prepared for what conference play is going to look like. And so many rosters now have all of, you know, veterans coming back in the COVID year and, Hey, I love the fact that there's other teams out there now that feel like they can get to a final four and are now competing in, in the conference for conference championships. That's the, if I liken it when we started, you know, when I got here and Duke was the standard, 
I knew we we had to we had to get players in here to be able to compete against the best. When when you want to you know be the best, you got to play the best. And I think that standard and bar has been raised in, in conference play. I can't say enough about the coaches in our league, the recruiting that's taken place, and it's fun. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in battles where where you're going to find out just where your strengths and and your weaknesses lie? So yes, this non-conference scheduling is intentional. It will prepare us to, you know, really tighten up on our chemistry and, and our continuity. And, you know, at the same point, I think, though, having the perspective, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And, you know, the the non-conference is there for a reason to prepare you for conference play to then ultimately get you ready for postseason. When you think about the players who are doing this, one of them who obviously jumps out to me is Abby Myers. And uh, I, I, I think, again, you know, it's part of that Ivy League to Maryland pipeline uh, that has been so successful, you know, with Katie Benzin, of course, as well. Um, but getting Abby in a spot right away where she's having the opportunity to play against the best of the best. I, I just my, my twofold question on that is how significant do you think that is in getting a sense of just how much Abby can give to you? And second of all, how much do you think that reflects on the fact that there is a shrinking gap between the level of basketball being played at the Ivy League and the level of play, you know, in the power fives? Right, right. I think if you're a player, you're a player. It doesn't matter what league and where you've come from. We've been really fortunate, you know, Abby now in her fifth year, when you see the the growth and the development that has taken place, has all been as a, a result of the work that she's put in. And I think if anyone was ever concerned, which I know we weren't, mm -hmm. but if you were like, all you had to watch was what she did throughout her senior year, as well as in the NCAA tournament, you know, the, the game she had against Kentucky where, you know, she, you know, really put her team on her back, like she did all season long for them. So, you know, no surprise that she's come in here. She is a dynamic scorer, can score in a lot of ways. I've been so impressed with her leadership and her vocalness because with only having, you know, Diamond and Faith, you know, as seniors, she's really kind of allowed her voice to to shape up. And we need that with four freshmen and, and a lot of newcomers that, that have come in. So, you know, we're going to rely on Abby a lot. She is mm -hmm. showing She's a consistent worker and going to consistently, you know, help this team every single night. And it's so fascinating to me, you know, Lavender Bridge obviously is such a key component to what you are bringing in, but all of your players are so different from one another and just gives you so much versatility. When you see uh, a lineup with Lavender and Abby at the same time, like what's the division of labor like for the two of them? <laughs> uh, you know, it, again, I mean, as they continue, you know, this, this team continues to develop their chemistry together, yeah. but I, I do love the fact that, you know, will be hard matchups, hard, hard to guard and, you know, Lav obviously can score in, in a lot of ways as well. And so as they continue to keep developing their chemistry on the court, it just makes us better as a team and, you know, it continues to kind of filter through through their teammates. So the two of them have been really dynamic. I love seeing that we have a Lavender Briggs that is healthy. She had off season surgery and and so now she's, you know, been able to get her rhythm and her bounce back. And, you know, again, another player that just comes in ready to work, ready to, you know, put this team in the best position possible and ready to make as many plays as she needs to for us. I mean, the good health is so key. And, and again, you know, that brings us to Faith, who uh, is once again another example of the fact that you've essentially turned your campus into New Jersey South as a New Jersey. <laughs> right. I, I definitely see and, and enjoy that. And we'll get to the other Jersey product in a moment. But in terms of Faith back, what is she looking like? How how close to 100 percent is she and what can you rely on with her? Obviously, she's such a key emotional component to what you guys are doing. But having her out on the court, um, you know, she she brings the jersey in that way. Where she's yeah, open. I mean, that, it's, actually, uh, that requires good health. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's awesome having having faith back and someone that we really missed last season. She's that ultimate glue facilitator, communicator coach on the on the court leader all of it and when that was taken off the court for us last year that that was a huge hit 
So to have her back finally, she's worked so hard coming off of that ACL injury and, and I, you know, is ahead of schedule. No question. Does she have all of her explosiveness back and speed? No, you know, that, that is an area that I think sometimes with an ACL injury can take 12 to 15 months, yeah. but she's always going to give you all those intangibles diving on the floor and getting those loose balls and commuting. And that's the element that we have really missed. And it's been such a welcome addition to have her back with, with our team and, and helping, helping us lead. I mean, it, it, I'm eager to see her back on the floor. It, it's, it's always that joyful presence when you see yep. somebody who gives those, you know, who you can, I'm sure you can chart the deflections is my favorite part. When right. You right. Locked on women's basketball is brought to you by bet online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting the start of the upcoming women's college basketball season, not to mention NBA and NFL. Find all your latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there, especially women's sports. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Um, and But as far as Diamond Miller goes, the pride of Somerset, New Jersey, once again, you know, New Jersey South. Um, Diamond Miller is somebody who comes up first. Of course, we had her on the show a couple weeks ago talking about what she brings to the table. In a lot of ways, it feels like you and I have had a similar conversation about Diamond, which is, she has a ceiling like few players I think we've ever seen at Maryland or anywhere else. And then getting her healthy and getting her in a position to be able to do what she's capable of. The idea of a fully 100% healthy Diamond Miller in a Maryland offense that, again, you guys are usually top five and always top 20 in scoring every single year is something you know, observers salivate over, WNBA talent evaluators salivate over. So, you know, take me through kind of where, how close you think we are to having that set up in place, which is what I'm sure you are as excited about as anybody. Yeah. First of all, you're, you're a hundred percent right. And I can echo that when you talk about how many people are excited about her, I, the number of WNBA coaches and scouts we've had in, and it's only October into practices, are be, because of Diamond, and they've come in and spent intentionally a lot of days to to be able to to evaluate. And I love the fact Diamond has been through so much. I mean, she was a shell of herself last season with that injury. She battled and persevered. We tried to rest her. We tried to play through it, and and you know she did everything she possibly could. You could noticeably tell there was a difference with the off season, and you know now she is back to 100% diamond, her lift, her explosiveness, her speed, her ability to score and defend. And, you know, no question, she should be a, a top five draft pick. And, you know, she's just, you know, the, what I love, you know, and the other thing I'd say what I love right now where she's at is just the, the leadership role she's taken upon herself, being that, you know, fourth year, knowing what the, her head coach wants, what's expected in the program. She's really setting that standard for us with so much change in the off season. I trust her a thousand percent with everything. And I, I think this is going to be just like the, the cherry on top for her this season because she has worked so hard. She's stayed the course. She's been resilient through some tough things. And I'm really excited to, to see it all pay off for her. We're just, we're just throwing it out there. I'm just, we're going to lay down a marker. A 100% healthy Diamond Miller is going to be in the conversation for National Player of the Year. So it's just, well, our listeners ought to know that. Um, As she, she should, <laughs> for sure. And, and, and top five is right. Top five might might be even underselling. We'll, we'll yeah. see where she ends up being. So before I let you go, I just I would be remiss not to talk about Bree Jones and the evolution we have seen from her, um, you know, coming out of your program. The fact that she's continually able to reinvent herself and put herself in a position where she is, you know, you talk about what WNBA teams have in mind. Obviously, they are all interested in finding ways to bring her in. Just how how amazing has it been to watch you know she she was so much of you know in many ways kind of a traditional five um coming out of school and she's continually able to 
add things to her game uh, every step of the way. Yeah, I love the fact, you know, someone was sharing with me in the league, Marie's a free agent this year and that she's she's going to get paid. She's, she's going to make a lot of money. And that's a credit to Brie. And I can say this from the time she got here to Maryland and I've continued to watch it in the league and in her career. She always she just puts her head down and works. Mm -hmm. she, she does all the other things. It, it doesn't matter. She wants to continue to keep making her game better. And she mm -hmm. did that when she was here from her freshman year coming in off of an ACL and needing to transform her body to starting in January of her freshman year to every year bringing something else to the table. And, I, and I've seen that in the, in the pros. I mean, she just continues to add to her game. She continues to the speed and the quickness and, and powerfulness that, that she plays with at that, that forward position. And I just, I love seeing players that are never satisfied and, and just want to put their head down. They don't worry about anything else or what's happening to other people. And as a byproduct, you're seeing her, you know, be named, you know, to the, you know, being an all-star in the WNBA going and, you know, the world championship and winning the, another gold medal. I mean, she just continues to, to work and great things continue to, to provide themselves in her path because of it. Locked on women's basketball, your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest story of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Very true. And, and then just one other alum. Um, the, the term triple-double, we just need to call it <laughs> Melissa Thomas now, right? Isn't that, that's got to be the new rule? I mean, have you ever seen that in a playoff game back-to-back? -back? Mm -hmm. No, I, I I, but nothing with Alyssa would ever surprise me. Nothing yeah. because again, and, and you couldn't even, you know, the, between Alyssa and Bree and that dynamic and relationship and being teammates, mm -hmm. college, WNBA professionally overseas. And again, another player that, you know, early in her high school college career was snubbed by a lot of rankings or what have you. And, what I love about Alyssa and the family, no big deal. You know, just continue to show people that they made the wrong decision, the wrong choice, and everything will work out for itself. And again, another player, you know, those are generational type of players when you talk about that, that just continue to come in. And, you know, it, it's hard now with social media and a lot of noise out there and where you should be ranked, what you should be doing. Those those two kids, those two families just instilled a work ethic in, in their children that you can see as second to none. And as a result of it, have had a lot of success. He just stay four years at Maryland. They keep on having success at, at that next level. Just Might be on to something. <laughs> well, Brenda Freeze, very excited to see how it all comes together. Very eager to see the way this team comes together and appreciate your time always. For our listeners, thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you subscribe at YouTube and go over to thenexthoops.com because we are going to be covering Maryland and all of college basketball very closely all year. Uh, that's it for today. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Until then, I am host Howard Magdal wishing you a wonderful day. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>